All right, we're back, Warriors again, forever. Hope you're comfortable. I know I am. Yeah. So make sure you get comfy while you're working on your statistics homework at home. Okay, so where we left off was the empirical rule. And so we have to memorize these three percentages. Um, but we'll be on the test. So you definitely want, and the practice test, you definitely want to memorize these three numbers. Um, or write them down somewhere, anywhere. Write them down. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so then uh, please fill in the blanks for our empirical rule. With blank distributions, about blank percentage of the distributions fall within one standard deviation. And what percent falls within two? What percent falls within three? So if you uh, so memorize this, memorize it. Um, so if you do memorize this, if you remember, um, so we discussed this in our previous lesson with the empirical rule. And uh, let's see if we can remind you there. Uh, maybe, maybe not. So with our empirical rule, we have three different percentages. Here it is. So three different percentages. It has to do a standard deviation. And so the three different percentages that we uh, talked about, or not, here it is, um, was these three percentages. 68, 95, 99.7. Don't know if it's question number 11 on the test, but it's definitely on the test. Because I think we have to cut some of the problems back, we'll see. Okay, so again, it's 68% uh, of our data, fall within one standard deviation to the left and right. Um, 95 fall within two standard deviations. And 99.7 fall within three standard deviations. So make sure that you have that mesmerized, memorized, Awesome possum. Okay, so that's on our practice test. So have those memorized. Well, what kind of distributions are you talking about? Well, if you just uh, noticed, did you see what kind of distributions we were talking about there? So it was like a mound shape, right? That's the definition. So it's uh, the answer is mound shape distributions. But really, if you're gonna upgrade your knowledge to college statistics, it's actually gonna be a normal distributions. Okay, so normal distributions follow the 68, 95, 99.7. So normal distributions. This is called the normal distribution. 68, 95, 99.7. Normal or mound shape. Cool. So I'd probably stick with um, normal just because really that's what you're going to hear in college, not mound shape. You're going to hear normal. Which normal distributions are symmetric, peaks in the center. Cool. So we're going to put that as our test answer and practice test answer. So normal distributions. Awesome. Which color would you like? Really? Okay. I love that color too. It's my favorite. Normal distributions. If you have a cool, like, yellow background, that'd be kind of neat. Nice. No. I meant so you could actually see it with the light blue. Maybe, kind of. That's just the text color. How do you get the background? Oh well. Okay, so normal distributions. Okay, so again, there's going to be three super duper important numbers you want to memorize. So 68% fall within one standard deviation. 95 fall within two standard deviations. And 99.7% fall within three standard deviations of the uh, mean. So memorize that, memorize that. Okay, so I'll help you with doing with the uh, kids cereal and you can try with the adult cereal. Which cereal has more variation, kids or adults? Please explain. Find the solution by hand. Okay, so work for partial credit. So yeah, so we'll actually do number 10 together and then we'll show you the kids cereal with the, uh, you can just use a standard deviation crunch number cruncher, you can Google it. And, and then you can try either the, ki uh, the adults by hand or with the number cruncher. Okay, so here's the formula again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So this is important. We have n equals seven numbers in our setup there. So that means this is going to be automatically filled in with n equaling seven. So seven minus one there. Okay, so what we're going to do is capital S lowercase x equals a super big square root symbol. I know, it's huge. K 
Okay, and so we're going to take each of the data points, remember, and we're going to square them and add them with each one. And so how many of these am I making? Well, how many numbers are in a data set? That's right, there's seven of them. Awesome. So it's one, two, three, four, five, getting smaller, uh oh, six, squeeze the last one in, seven. There it is. So this is doing it by hand. You can also use the calculator on the test. There's the Barney notch. Okay, so then you're gonna take each of those data numbers, right? Each of those each of those numbers. So one, three, five, so one, three, five, six, seven, nine, and eleven. And so you're gonna minus, do you remember this? Take each observation and minus it against the what? Well, it's the distance to the average. So we're going to minus it. We're going to fix that. We're going to minus it to the distance of the average. Right? Awesome. Oh, well, what does that mean? That means we've got to find the average. Good nine. Okay, so what is the average of these seven numbers? Well, we're going to add them up. So one plus three is four. Plus five is nine, and then let's see here. So that's one plus four is nine, and then we have uh, nine plus six is fifteen, plus seven, fifteen plus seven is twenty-two, and then twenty-two plus nine is thirty-two minus one thirty-one, and then thirty-one plus eleven is forty-one plus one forty-two. So we take our forty-two numbers and we, so we add them all up. We get 42. We get 42 total. We divide it by the seven numbers. This is again finding the what? This is finding the average. So it's going to be 42 divided by seven is six. So our average is six. A V G. Our average x bar is six. Okay. So let's use a different color then for six. There we go. Go ahead and do six. Awesome. All the way across there. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do the difference of all those, square them all, and then divide by seven minus one. This, of course, is doing the standard deviation by hand, but definitely you can use your graph and calculator to number crunch it out with uh, your. So using one of our stats, remember that gives you the standard deviation of a set of data right here, capital S, lowercase x. Um, but also, you can also use your um, Google. You can Google standard deviation calculator. Okay, so now here we go. I'm gonna try to do some of these in my head. So one minus six is negative five, and negative five squared is 25. Three minus six is negative three. And negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Remember, it's going to square them all and make them all positive. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 6 minus 6 is 0. Squared is still 0. Um, 7 minus 6 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. 9 minus 3 is... 9 minus 6 is 3. And 3 squared... Oops. What the... 3 squared is 9. Sorry about that. Okay, so then, again, 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. What an ugly 9. 11 minus 6 again is 5, and 5 squared is 25. Okay, so then add all those up and divide them by 7 minus 1 is 6. So we have 25 and 25 is 50. And 9 plus 1 is 10. 9 plus 1 is 10. So 10 and 10 is 20. So 50 plus 20 is 70. So we have the square root of 70 over 6. You can put those in your calculator just to double check. I think I did that right. Okay, so then we want to get a decimal number here. So we're going to do 70 divided by 6 in just a regular calculator. And then we want to take the square root of that, right? 
So let's actually do the whole thing underneath the square root just to be more accurate. So 70 divided by 6 is, oh, it's square root of 70 divided by 6. So, so that's going to be 3.415. So 3.415. Nice. So that is doing it by hand. And then again, using the graphing calculator, we can also give that a try. So we're going to go to stat. We're going to get edit our data. We're going to go up and clear our kids list. And we're going to type the numbers 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 11. Cool. So let's double, double check there. 1, 3, because you do want to double check. It's easy to make mistakes with these. Okay, again, so we're going to go to, yep, we double check, so it's the right list. We're going to go over to stat button. We edit our list there again. So back to stat button. Over to calc, there's one of our stats. And now the up list one is already ready to go. Okay, so our standard deviation is what? 3.4156. Nice, so that matches. We means we did it right. So that again is the standard deviation, capital S, lowercase x. Now if you don't have a graphing calculator, um, then you can um, just use, Google it, just a standard deviation calculator, right? So it's www, oh, so just go to, just go to Google, and then we'll just type in standard deviation calculator. There we go. And so you can just do math is fun or calculator.net. We used that one before. Awesome. And it says, please provide number separated by a comma to calculate the standard deviation. Okay, so we'll have to use commas this time. So one comma. Um, let's see, is there a three next? And then I think I'm doing spaces in between each one too. There we go, seven. Not an. Um, nine, I believe, and eleven. Is that right? One, three, five, six, seven, nine. So it's three, six, so seven numbers. That seems right to me. So one, three, five, six, seven, nine, eleven. One, three, five, six, seven, nine, eleven. Okay. So then we'll just say it's a sample. Always use a sample because we don't know the actual population. And then hit calculate. And look, it even shows all the work for you. There's our seventy divided by six. What? Take the square root of that, baby. We get 3.4156. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's another way to remind you using the standard definition calculator. Nice, nice. And bam, we got three different ways. What? So we have three different ways there um, to find the standard deviation. You impressed? I'm impressed. Three different ways to find the standard deviation. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and for the homework practice test, you want to go ahead and practice which one? Both of them. So you do now. So you practice and do both kids and adults on the practice test um, and submit your answers through Canvas. If we're still in, if we are still doing at home learning. Um, if we're not, then we might not be using this next year. We'll see. Awesome. Okay, so now you're going to do those. Which year has more variation? So I want to tell you um, whatever, or is it whichever cereal has the highest SX, right? Which, which stands for standard deviation. Right, so whichever cereal, let's just put this down here to help you. Helpful video. There we go. Okay, so whichever cereal has the highest standard deviation, that's the one that has more. That's. That's. Wow. That's the one with more variation. And then why did you choose the one you had? Um, because it had the higher standard deviation, more variation. So that's really the answer. Whichever cereal has the highest standard deviation, that's the one with more variation. And so that's the one that, uh, so that's why, because it had more variation, higher standard deviation. 
right? It just means the data is spread out more. And that's kind of also what standard deviation means, how far the data is spread out. Remember that standard deviation is the average distance from the, so let me show you here. So don't forget if you still can't really understand what standard deviation is. So standard deviation is the average distance from the center, which in our case, um, average distance from six to all the other data points, right? What's the average distance? Well, in this case, the average distance was three and a bit, three and a half, 3.4156. It's the average distance. And so the higher standard deviation, the higher the variation or higher the average distance. Cool. So hopefully that makes more sense. You can always Google it some more about degrees of freedom things like that okay so the last part on our video because I don't think we're gonna have time for this amazingness this year but uh, if you're if you are in class then definitely ask me how to do these in class okay so here's number 11 so you got 66 on your statistics test and your class average is 64 and the standard deviation of 2 coincidentally you got a 66 in English too but the class average was 52 and the standard deviation is 17. So determine the z-score for both math and English <coughs> and decide which test you did better on, math or English. Okay, so this will be submit this on Canvas 2 and on the test and I'll just change some numbers around. Okay, so for your statistics test, um, let's see here your math test. Um, let's go ahead and do the easy one together <laughs> and then you can do the hard one. Okay, so we'll call it Z of math or statistics. So what's the z-score of statistics? Well, there's a formula. Do you remember how to find the, the z-score? Because that's going to be on the test. Remember how to do z-score? Let's show you if you can't remember. Okay, so it's going to be the person's score minus against the average, the class average, average, and then divided by the standard deviation. So in this kind of problem, we're going to give you that standard deviation. You just got to remember to divide by it, right? Divide by it. Cool. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and help you with this one, let you finish it on your own. Um, so the, you got a 66, so that's the person's score. So 66 minus the class average, which was 64, good. And that's a class average divided by the standard deviation of just two. Yeah, that's not too bad. Good luck with standard deviation of 17. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, sorry. So that's for um, that's for the math. Um, so you're going to do the English one and see you had a higher z-score. And you'll submit that on Canvas. Okay, so 66 minus 64 is just two. And 2 minus 2 is just one. So we got a z-score of 1 for statistics. z-score of 1. So now you want to do the z-score now for English. And uh, it's for your homework there for this practice test. Again, it's going to be um, your, out, your score, which is also 66, minus 52. Do that first, push enter. Then eventually you'll go ahead and divide it by 17. Cool. So you go in and find that, and then submit which one had the highest z-score. Cool. Okay, thanks for watching. You're the best. Statistic, gonna miss you. Best teaching you. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thanks for watching.